Um, so first of all, just to show you, um, here's, here's one I did earlier in Blue Peter fashion. Um, so this is a, a Swift 16 um, Owine body kit. And again, those of you that saw me the year before last, this was actually bought for um, the soldering demonstration. And you can see um, on here, I don't know whether I can get this a bit closer maybe, but um, there's some beading on the, on the tank tops um, that I've added extra to the kit. Um, and you can see various little bits and pieces, lifting eyes for the tanks and so on, that have been soldered. But obviously, some of the, the more challenging joints are actually these, these big joints along the tops of the tanks here, um, and also, you know, sort of joining one tank section onto another. So you can see, you know, sort of where you can, you try and solder inside, but on this kit, um, it wasn't always, it wasn't always possible. I'm making the right bog of this, there we go. So you can see here, you know, sort of like the tank bottoms here are soldered um, as much as possible from the inside. But with this particular design, you know, you really have no choice but to solder on the top. So making visible joints like this is, is probably the most challenging part of, of doing it. Anyway, let's talk a bit um, about slides, or sorry, go through some slides and talk about the theory. Um, and as a, an old um, ex-health and safety manager, I've, I've got a compulsory health and safety slide. Um, and really the key, the key risk or hazards associated with soldering are really the compositions of the solders that you use. So um, most of the car solders are, are sort of lead, tin, alloys, both of which will do you no good at all. Um, and some of them have got cadmium in as well, which are even... Uh, oh, there's the health and safety crew just coming into, onto the table. Um, fluxes, um, again, you're going to be using liquid fluxes like this. Um, they're usually acid-based, phosphoric acid, um, ammonium chloride, that kind of thing. Um, and again, whilst they won't actually give you a, a serious skin burn, um, you certainly know if you've got some acid on your fingers and you, you, you know, touch a bit. Um, thermal burns, um, obvious. Um, so really, you know, the only thing that you need to, to make sure you do is wash your hands after you've been soldering because you will have residues of lead, tin and cadmium, possibly some uh, flux residues on your fingers. Um, so basic tools for soft soldering. Um, and I'm really only going to talk about soft soldering. Last time I, I tried to do a bit of silver soldering as well which is probably why we went so badly over time. So there's, there's two basic ways that you can do soft soldering. One is with an electric soldering iron, um, and then the other is with a gas flame. Um, no doubt there's somebody here that's got tucked away in their workshop a, a gas soldering iron that, uh, you know, I can remember my dad had one and he, you know, stick it on the gas cooker to get it up to temperature. Um, really, you know, sort of gas irons aren't that great because, um, you, you know, Essentially, you've got thermal mass in the bit of the iron, and once you've taken the heat out of it, then you've got to put it back on the gas, and it can, it can end up being more of a faff than, than you spend more time reheating the bit than actually doing the soldering. Um, you also need a stand for an iron. When you buy um, a soldering iron like this, this is a 75-watt weller, you know, this is how it comes in the packet, um, and they don't typically sell you a stand, so you've got to buy a stand, otherwise you end up with the iron rolling around or getting knocked about on your worktop, um, putting burns and melting things when you don't want it to. Um, and along with that, a wet sponge. Um, and you really need to have a wet sponge handy because that's what you'll use to keep, keep the bit clean. Um, fiberglass brush, I've got a couple here. Um, this one has been with me, man and boy. Um, this one's a more recent addition. Um, and this one's quite nice because the, the um, fiberglass refill is just a long continuous strand. So this stapler one um, eats refills like there's no tomorrow, whereas this one is, is a lot more straightforward to use. Um, solder, and we'll talk a bit more about solder in a minute. Um, flux, um, and then I, two years ago I was using sodium bicarbonate solution. What I've recently bought is this, which is um, cars neutralizing rinse. I've got no idea what's in it. 
I expect it's probably a weak solution of sodium bicarbonate, but there you are, they charge you five quid for it, and thank you very much. Um, but what you use that for is to neutralize the flux. If you do some soldering um, and leave the acidic flux on the joint um, and then go away and leave your work for two or three weeks, you'll find it will corrode. Um, and then finally, br a brush to apply um, the flux onto the joint. Um, I tend to use, you know, sort of really cheap, nasty brushes that you can get from the news agents or um, on eBay. Um, I have in the past used those um, plastic brushes, so the bristles are actually set into plastic, and they're very good um, because the, the, the flux doesn't actually um, corrode the ferrule. So, in terms of soldering irons, um, you know, I t use two main types. One is um, a 50 watt iron, which is temperature controlled, and this one was actually cheaper than 20 quid. I think I paid about 16 quid from it when my old one went fat. Um, and it, it's a very good basic iron. You know, you haven't got a digital readout of the temperature on the bit or anything fancy like that. Um, but you can turn it down enough to do low melt soldering for white metal, um, or you can zoom it right up and it will solder 188 solder very, very nicely. Um, and then the other one is, is this beastie here. And you can see, you know, sort of compared to um, this one, you know, you've got a much bigger element, much bigger bit. And this is the boy that I use for um, soldering big joints. The only thing is it's a bit nose heavy, so it tends to sort of have a mind of its own on the, on the bench. So. But again, you're, you're talking pretty moderate prices for these sorts of tools. Um, and then gas soldering, um, you know, you can use um, a blowtorch, obviously, but typically the ones that you buy from B&Q for plumbing um, are a little bit, you know, sort of over the top for the kind of um, work that we're going to do. So what I've got is one of these. Um, it actually came from um, a cook shop um, where the chefs use it for, um, you know, sort of putting the, the colour onto the um, meringues um, or, um, um, yeah, sort of doing the starters and things like that, so melting the cheese. Um, but the, these are very good because they have got a... Um, Uh, a built-in piezo ignition system. Um, and then a thermally resistant surface, and this is actually um, a vermiculite block. You can buy this, again, you can get it from eBay for sort of two or three quid, um, plus eight pound postage and packing. Um, you know, sort of, and um, it, 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 it's, I think they sell this stuff, you know, sort of in big sheets for lining flues um, on boilers and things like that. But, you know, a small sheet like this is very good and it's, it's thermally resistant. Um, and then various other bits and pieces like work holding clamps like these. These are arterial clamps. Um, screwdrivers. I tend to use little bits of wood like this. Um, and I've also got this little tweaky thing here, which is a little probing tool that's actually got a handy slot cut in the end. Um, and then lastly, scrapers to clean up joints after soldering. And I tend to use wood chisels, half inch and quarter inch wood chisels. Um, so in terms of solder selection, I think a lot of people, they'll go to uh, Maplins or somewhere else and buy something like this. Um, and, you know, there's, there's no problem um, with it. In fact, this is a pretty old uh, reel of solder. And you can see it's, it's tin, lead and copper in it. These days, if you go to Maplins and buy some solder, you won't get anything with lead in it. Um, so what do you do? Well, cars. Um, and you can buy this from um, CNL Fine Scale or Kronos on the web, do them. Um, and what cars have, have got are a range of different solders with different temperatures. Um, oops. So, um, this uh, Cars 188 is, um, uh, again, straight tin lead alloy, um, and it, as the name suggests, it melts at 188 centigrade. Um, but they also do this one, which has got cadmium in it, which is 145 as a low melt, or lower melt, and you typically will use this for adding the fine detail. Once you've done your main solder joints, 
if you want to add something else, obviously you don't want what you've put together all starting to ping apart again, so you use the, the 145 low now. Um, and then finally, the red label stuff, um, this is for white metal, so it literally is 70 degrees C, um, you know, and of course there's the, the, the well-known tip here, if you're soldering white metal and it all goes wrong, just drop it, what you've done in a tub of boiling water and it will come apart again. Okay, so 70 degree solder, 188 solder. For doing um, a body kit, you know, I try and do the majority in 188 um, and literally just put the last few bits and pieces on um, with 145. So, you know, I think a lot of people get very, you know, sort of all soldering, it's quite hard to do. Um, actually, it's all pretty straightforward and hopefully if my demonstration goes as well as I hope it will, um, you'll see for yourselves. But essentially what you have to do is start off with, with a clean um, piece of work. So the, the components that you're going to join together have got to be clean. It's no good taking something that's you know, sort of very tarnished or has even got some sort of visible marking on it and expecting to be able to solder that. That just won't work. So you have to start with a clean piece of work and typically I use the fiberglass brush um, along the joint to, to clean up the, 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 the work. Um, then you put the joint together and apply the flux with a brush, um, wipe the bit on the um, sponge um, to clean it, um, apply some solder onto the bit, and what I usually do is actually just dip the end of the solder into the flux so the, the, the solder will flow onto the, the iron bit. Um, and then apply the bit, and what you have to do is you have to give the job time to warm up. So essentially what you're going to do, you've got this nice hot, big bit on your soldering iron and the heat has to flow from that bit into your work. And once the work is up to properly up to temperature, then the solder will flow. If you if you try and actually make you know do the joint, run the iron along the joint without the work having come up to temperature, that's when you get problems and it, you get sort of stops and starts and it just won't work. Um, and obviously if you're doing a long a long join then you're going to have to, you know, sort of add additional solder onto the, the, the bit because you will sort of like run out. Um, and then when you've finished, obviously you let it um, um, freeze as it cools down and then neutralize it with some um, sodium bicarb or neutralizing rinse. And typically once, you know, sort of I've put the, the job together or the module together, then I'll take the whole thing into the, the utility room and give it a really good wash. Okay, just beware about using GIF, or SIF as it's known these days, um, to, to get all the crud off, because um, SIF has got some additives in it that will make it difficult to paint. So if you use SIF to get your piece of brass or nickel silver nice and clean again, use some sugar soap afterwards to get the, the, the silicone additives out or off, off the job. Um, flame solder joint, it's much the same, you know, sort of fluxing, um, get the thing up to temperature, but the difference is obviously you can't apply the solder, or if you, you can try and apply the solder when, in the flame, but it will literally just fall off the end of the solder re reel and onto the job. So what you have to do is you have to put small pieces of solder along the joint, okay, after it's been fluxed, and then you'll put the flame along the joint, and you'll, uh, you'll see, you know, sort of the, the, the solder will literally just um, melt and, and fuse into the, or run along the joint. Um, so, you know, people say, well, what's, you know, sort of what should I use? My, th there's pros and cons to both, really. Obviously, you can't use um, a flame for small detail. So you've got to be using an iron um, to add on small details and things like beading and so on. But to actually put, you know, sort of big units together, like solder, I've got here some, some tanks and tank tops um, that we're going to do. Um, something like that, so, um, using a flame um, technique can actually work better because you can end up with a neater joint, and we'll see that. Um, white metal, if we've got time, I'll do a bit of white metal soldering with the low melt solder. Um, you have to use um, a, very, a temperature controlled iron, it's no good trying to, to solder white metal with an iron like this that's got a bit temperature up at three or 400 centigrade. Um, all you'll do is you'll melt your model. 
So you have to have a temperature controlled iron, you have to mess around or you know, play around with the temperature that settings um, so that you've got enough heat in the bit or temperature in the bit that you'll heat your job up when you're soldering it but not enough that you can actually melt the white metal. So you know you do have to play with this a bit and if you've got some scrap white metal things like you know sort of sprue trimmings or something like that keep it and you can use that to set up your, your iron. Um, you have to use the special flux as well. You have to use the red label flux um, here rather than um, the, the green label, which is for normal um, tin lead alloy. So that's the end of the slides. Let's um, see what we can do then. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to start off, and, and um, Brian uh, Dominic has um, bravely volunteered um, a Baldrick body kit that he bought a while ago for me to um, use for demonstration purposes. So probably the first, uh, what we'll do is we'll start off and we'll have a go um, with an iron. Um, so I've got my flux here and I'm going to apply it. You can see this is the, 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 the piece, okay, and this is quite a nice kit. You've, they've etched a groove for the tank top to drop into and I'm going to solder it on the back. Um, just to try and give, give a, a nice neat job. So plenty of flux um, along here. Okay, we're going to use the green label solder, the 188 solder. So just drop that in. Clean the bit on the wet sponge. Okay, so hopefully you can see a nice clean bit. And can you see the, the solder went onto that? really, really easily. Okay, now, you want to hold the, the joint together and you can use anything, you know, sort of handy. I've just got this piece of wood, you know, sort of a handy um, Starbucks coffee stirrer. And I'm going to try and get this. Yes? Yeah. Unfortunately, the bit's in the, in the way, but you can, you, you can hear the flux. Can you see that joint going along? I'm yeah. um, just about out of solder, so again a bit more onto the iron. And can you see where, where I started again? You've got a, a, a blob. If I try and point to it there. Okay, so if you're soldering, you know, sort of like on the good side, then where you've got the blob, where you've taken the bit off and put it back on, that just means that you've got a bit more work to do to clean up the joint. So if you solder it on the back, you're making it easier for yourself to, to do this. So let's, let's carry on. I might have to reflux this note, it's good. Okay, and you can see that by using an iron with a nice big bit on it, there's never a problem with getting enough heat onto the job. Um, so to do the corners then, okay, quick bit of prop, a bit more solder, and again, and what I'm doing is, is pushing down here to get that piece into the slot and held there. Okay, and there we go. So in the interest of time, I won't go and do the other corner, but you can see essentially what we've got is um, a nice bright solder joint running all the way along the, the seam. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Right, so let's have a go at gas soldering. Um, and again, the, the problem I've got here is, is that you want to try and push these, these ends in if you can to get a nice tight square joint. Um, and if I was doing this at home, I might um, sort of clamp a block here and 
so that I can then push with a piece of wood. Um, but we're going in, uh, operating under less than ideal circumstances. So what I've got, Brian, these are your side cutters. I nick them out your box, just so you know. Okay, so I've cut a couple of pieces of um, solder there. Can you see those um, lying in? Yeah, that's all good. All right, here we go. Okay, and I'm playing the torch along the joint because really, for this to work properly, we've got to get all of the, the, the nickel silver up to temperature. And you can see I've got the, I haven't got the, um, the end of the flame right at the, uh, there we go, did you see that run then? Okay, you don't want the, the, end, the, the end of the bright blue bit playing onto the work, okay? The, here is about where your temperature needs, you, you know, the temperature is right. If you get that right in there, you can overheat. Okay, and that's it. I won't pick it up straight away. <laughs> Give that a bit of a chance to cool down. Um, so that went surprisingly well. <laughs> Didn't manage to set fire to anything, and uh, it, the solder ran, so that's good. Right, so um, a couple of um, more advanced techniques. Everybody know about sweating a joint? No, okay. What we've got here on a, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see on the top, you've got a very nice, neat fillet of solder from the, from the flame soldering. Is that good, Rob? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and with um, a fiberglass pencil, that will clean up an absolute tree. Might have to go along with, um, with the trusty chisel just to get a couple of lumps off, but in general, you know, you get a nice, nice, neat joint. Okay, sweating then, what that is, is where you um, put solder between two pieces of um, flat plate um, to, uh, that you want to join together. Um, and actually, the best way of sweating a joint is rather than um, tinning each, well, the conventional way is you tin each piece, okay? So tinning, let's, let's do a bit of tinning to start with. Okay, I've got a piece of brass here, and you can see I'm just cleaning it up with a fiberglass pencil. And then what I've got here is some 188 degree solder paint. Okay, um, you don't have to have this, but it makes it an awful lot easier. And what, this is, what they do is they take 188 degree solder and they grind it up into a very fine powder, and then disperse it in flux. So you end up with this nice gray gloop and you put a bit onto um, the um, work that you want to tin oh. and when you hit it with the iron again let's wipe the bit get it clean when you hit it with the iron the solder will melt there you go and lo and behold it turns from dirty gray into lovely silver. Okay? So what you would normally do is you tin, tin both pieces of sheets that you want to, to join face to face. Um, but in this case I'm going to cheat. Um, and I've got the, uh, this part of the, the etching, you got originally like that. It was all one big flat piece and they, they want you to fold these, this piece back on itself to create a double thickness. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put some solder paint in here, fold it back down, and then what I'll need to do is, is you don't have to do this, but it, it helps. Just put a bit of flux on the back of the joint, really so that I can get some solder flowing from the iron onto the piece of work. 
Okay, that will have to be cleaned up later, but it helps them amazingly with the heat transfer. So it get, helps get heat into the work. And then literally all I'm doing is holding the iron onto the back here, and it's spitting and popping. But I know that as the, as the two pieces of sheet come up to temperature, then the solder's melting, and it's going to join those two together. Okay, I'm just going to leave that now to fuse. And there we are, done. All right, so, and that's, that's, that's joined together. And you can see that there is actually a, a line of silver along the edges of the joints, showing that the, the solder has melted, run between those two pieces of um, sheet. And that's a pucker joint now. Okay, so um, how are we doing for a time, Rod? It's five minutes, okay. So the last thing I've got to show you is white metal. Okay, and um, <laughs> this is the armless bit of the demonstration. Uh, um, these are just spare arms from um, um, a perfect world figure. Um, that just happened to be the only scrap white metal I could find. Same rules apply though, you want to clean it before you try and join it. Okay, and then different solder, different iron. So I've got um, Red label flux. Um, and what I, f I typically find is that when I'm soldering white metal, you really have to be very generous with, with fluxing um, and get everything really, really fluxed. And very often I'll have to sort of reflux during a, during a joint. Now, you, you can, can you see the blob of white metal solder on the end of the iron there? Okay, and I'm going to apply it here onto the arm. Yes, and onto this one. So I'm tinning both of these, and then literally all I need to do is run the two together. All right? And they're not exactly shaking hands, <laughs> but... Uh, okay, so I'm gonna take this, this joint apart again, because I wanted to show you um, how to join white metal to brass because quite a few kits have sort of a brass um, body, for example, and then white metal details. So back on our piece of spare brass, this is um, red label flux um, and some white metal. Now, <laughs> sod's law, isn't it? This is actually tinning okay. But before it, the, the, the received wisdom is that don't really rely on 70 degree solder to tin the brass. Okay, so this bit that we did earlier is actually going to give us a much stronger joint um, for our white metal. So if I put again some red label flux on here, get the arm, get some white some low melt solder on here. Oops. Let's see how we do. So I'm now putting white metal solder onto the, the 188 degree solder. Okay, and you can see, see it, and there we go. And that's, that's actually, I mean, you can pass that around. That's, that's a, a pretty reasonable joint. In fact, um, if I pass some of these around, you can have a look. As long as Brian gets the bits back for his engine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you should be able to see the difference between the, the um, iron solder joint and the flame solder joint. But that's pretty much it. I mean, hopefully, the fact that I've just been able to do here, stand here and you know do it. You know, some of you that maybe 
here and thinking, oh, I can't do this, you know, you'll have seen that it's actually, you know, you get it all clean, you use plenty of flux, big enough iron, and it works. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Jonathan. And, and you finished the minutes of the call. We've got a moment or two. Do you want to take some questions? Yep. Can you sweat with a gas plate? Yes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, fiberglass pencil. Um, again, most of the, the model engineering suppliers um, sell these. You know, you can pick them up on the Proop stand. If you go to a show where there's a you know a tool company like Expo or Proops, they sell them. Um, but they they yeah they they're really really good for for cleaning up um, before you solder and also getting the solder off afterwards. Pardon? No, it's a, a you know if you twist the end, it'll push the uh, it'll push the bit up, so you can yeah. We're, we're used to anyway. Yes. <laughs> Any more questions? Anyone? Yes. What, what do you think of resistance soldering? Um, well, what I, I my experience of resistance soldering has really been in sort of like the four millimeter scale world where they're, they're quite popular for putting very, very fine detail kits together. Um, I think, you know, sort of if you, you know, with the sort of size of, of uh, work that we, we have in 16 mil, um, in some cases I think it's, you know, sort of unnecessary. It's unnecessarily sophisticated um, for our purposes, but, you know, if you've got a resistant soldering unit, um, you know, why not use it? But again, you know, resistant soldering units, think about the energy that you need to put into the work and the size of the work, the thermal capacity, because what you may find is the resistant soldering unit will actually struggle if you're trying to join big bits together. Terrific, thanks very much, John. Okay, thank if you. that's inspired uh, you to uh, build that kit that's been sat in the cupboard for ages, and then write about it. Starting over on this theatre any moment now, Andrew's going to be telling you about writing and photographing for 16mm today. So uh, thanks very much again, Jonathan, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show.